Before I read the final disposition of the court, allow me to express the court's appreciation to all counsel and all parties and amici appearing in this matter for your erudite and well-researched oral and written submissions. We also wish to thank you for patiently sitting and bearing with us for the last six hours as we delivered this judgment. The court notes in a special way the galaxy of legal luminaries, among them distinguished legal scholars, professors of constitutional law from Kenya and other jurisdictions who joined this case to enrich our judgment. We found their views very useful, although they were varied and divergent, especially on the applicability of the basic structure and doctrine, and whether it had acquired international application under the provisions of Article 2.5 of the Constitution. The court's decision has been enriched and benefited a great deal from the arguments advanced by all the parties who appeared before us. We hope with the full noise of time, even our local scholars will find their way in other jurisdictions, in other countries, America, Germany, or even Africa, to share our rich jurisprudence in those, with those courts. We also wish to thank our law clerks for their research and exceptional industry in supporting the work of this court. That said, in the course of writing this judgment, the court observed with concern some commentaries on the pending judgment carried out in the social media by some counsel, some of whom are appearing in this matter. The contents of those social media commentaries were in our view meant to influence, intimidate, or scandalize the court. This unfortunate practice is emerging and unless it is checked, it will erode the confidence and the dignity of the court. It would also amount to unprofessional conduct, especially by counsel appearing in this matter. And even counsel who are not in this matter but know very well that they cannot comment on a matter that is pending judgment. It is a well-established practice that counsel and indeed parties should refrain from directly or indirectly trying to improperly influence the court to rule in one way or the other. Once judgment has been reserved and judges retreated to consider submissions, and right judgment. Learned counsel Mr. Nelson Avi and Ms. Esther Angawa, who appeared for the first of the fifth respondents, took to the social media, Twitter, on different occasions. On 19th February and 15th February 2022, and they cast aspersions on the court. For counsel to appear before the apex court, then proceed to Al unnecessary diatribe, insults, and speculations on a pending judgment amounts to unethical conduct on the part of the council. The use of social media to disparage the court with the intention of lowering the dignity and the authority of the court or influencing the outcome of the case pending before the court is a trespass on the bounds of legitimate advocacy and moves to the realm of professionalism to professional misconduct. This is in line with the provisions of Section 61 of the Advocates Act that deals with the dishonorable conduct incompatible with the status of an advocate. Equally culpable is the conduct of senior counsel, Mr. Amin Nasil Abdullahi, who, though not counsel appearing in this matter, took the lead role in disparaging and dismashing the court as evidence from his post on Twitter on 8th February 2022, 15th February, 
and even as late as yesterday, the 29th March 2022. Section 17 of the Advocates Act envisages the rank and dignity of senior counsel is confirmed on the basis of irreproachable professional conduct and exemplary service to the legal and public service in Kenya. These standards are expected to continue even after confirmment of the rank of the senior counsel. Advocates should familiarize themselves with the code of standards of professional practice and ethical conduct, Gazette Notice Number 5212, and strive to conduct themselves in a manner that preserve and strengthen the dignity, the honor, and the ethics of the profession. Consequently, advocates should refrain from conduct that amounts to indirectly attempting to influence decisions pending before courts. Relevant to the use of social media, we wish to draw the attention of advocates to the standard of professional practice and ethics conduct number 10 that spells out what is inappropriate conduct. This caution should always play in the mind of advocates who are tempted to utilize social media to advance their cause. I will now proceed to give the final disposition of the court. Having considered the seven issues framed by this court for determination, the final orders are as follows. One, the basic structure and doctrine is not applicable in Kenya. Ibrahim, Supreme Court judge dissenting. B, in order to amend the Constitution of Kenya 2010, the four sequential steps as pronounced by the two superior courts below are not necessary. Ibrahim, Supreme Court judge dissenting. On the second issue, the first part A, the president cannot initiate constitutional amendments or changes through the popular initiative under Article 257 of the Constitution. Joaquin Dongo, Supreme Court judge, dissenting. The B aspect of that, issue two, the president initiated the amendment process in issue. Joaquin Dongo and the Naura Supreme Court judges dissenting. Consequently, C, consequently under Article 257 of the Constitution, the Constitution Amendment Bill of 2020 is unconstitutional. Joaquin Dongo and the Naura Supreme Court judges dissenting. The third issue, the second schedule of the Constitution of Kenya Amendment <coughs> Bill 2020 is unconstitutional for being in breach of Article 10.2 and 87.7a of the Constitution of Kenya 2020 for lack of public participation. Joaquin Dongo, Supreme Court Judge, concurring. Four. Civil proceedings cannot be instituted in any court against the president or the person performing the functions of the office of the president during their tenure of office in respect of anything done or not done under the Constitution of Kenya 2010. That was unanimous. Five, A, there was no obligation under Article 10 and 257.4 of the Constitution on INBC to ensure that the promoters of the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020 complied with the requirements for public participation. Unanimous. B, there was public participation with respect to the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020. Mwiru, Vice President, Ibrahim and Wanjara Supreme Court judges dissenting. Five, 
IBC at the requisite composition and quorum to undertake the verification process under Article 257.4. Ibrahim Supreme Court Judge dissenting. Six, no, I mean seven, the question raised regarding the interpretation of Article 257.10 of the Constitution on whether or not it entails requires that all specific proposed amendments to the Constitution should be submitted as separate and distinct referendum questions was not, was not right for determination. Joaquin Dongo, Supreme Court Judge, Konkari. Each party shall bear their own cost, this being a public interest matter. Consequently, the consolidated appeal is determined as follows. The appeal is allowed on issue number one. The appeal is allowed on issue number four. The appeal is allowed on issue number five. The appeal is allowed on issue number six. The appeal is allowed on issue number seven. The appeal is disallowed on issue number two. The appeal is disallowed on issue number three. Those are the orders of the court. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience. You will, we will seek your indulgence to perfect the final judgment. As you can see, we have so many pages to put together to come up with one judgment, uh, putting it together. It was very difficult because of the privacy involved and the logistics to put it together before delivery. We intend to do this and issue the judgment of the court on Tuesday next week. Today we will issue a press summary of this judgment, which will come out shortly in about one hour. Thank you very much for your forbearance and for your cooperation.